Welcome Vault Dwellers, my name is Nacho Bidness and we're doing a camp tour today. I'm located just a little bit south of Anchor Farm. I did an entire video on Anchor Farm and the strange mysteries that we can find if we explore this place. I'll leave a link to that in the description. And this turns out to be a fairly good place to camp. I don't know if it will still be available to camp once the Wastelanders DLC drops, but if it does allow you to camp here when that happens, this is going to be right next to one of the major locations for that DLC. Other things that recommend this particular location that is, as I said, just south of Anchor Farm, is that if you place your camp properly, there is a pool that you can kind of just barely get the edge of your camp over it, and you can have space for a water purifier. There's beehives here. If you are brewing teas, the honey is going to come in handy. And on the other side, whoops, we're under attack. <laughs> That's what happens with the live game, I guess. Um, on the other side, we have room for a copper extractor. So a couple of resources and next to what promises to be a major location, already this place seems like a good place to camp. So let's actually look at the building here and kind of explain what's going on with this because I don't normally go for builds like this. This is in a style that I would call Wasteland Mansion where it's one gigantic building, it's all of bricks and has all these lovely windows and everything and just doesn't look in my eye in place in the universe. And yet I see tons of players making builds like this that are uh, essentially of the brick set and furnished with all of the very finest furniture from the White Springs and all kinds of items from the Atomic Shop. And so I thought I would try my hand at a build like this. I'm interested to hear what you guys think about this in the comments. I'm also interested to hear if there is a style of build or a feature that you'd like to see me attempt, again, please let me know in the comments. So that's what the place looks like from the outside. I do have my vendors set up over here, and I did this slightly different from how most players do. Most players would line the outsides of this deck with the vending machines and leave the, the middle open. I have put the vending machines back to back in the middle just to be a little bit different. Once we go inside the main house, we're going to see that this is a pretty light and airy sort of place. It's got a loft up there and some different rooms and things that are all kind of poised around the outside, but it leaves a very open feel. And although I normally tend to try and build into existing objects and places in the world, and even though I don't think that this looks necessarily realistic, I do like the way that it turned out, with the exception of the tree branches sticking through the wall. I really wish there was a way I could chop down that tree. So I've just got a little kitchen over here. Not much decoration in this place because I used almost all of my budget on the building itself. And that means that we have to be a little bit sparse on the decorations. Got a nice living area here with some beautiful new couches and furniture and stuff. And out back we have a lovely greenhouse. Although I would not recommend buying this from the Adam shop. It is difficult to place at best. 
requires a lot of workshop budget and I decorated it sparsely because of my budget problems but unless you have adequate budget to decorate it correctly it just doesn't quite I think look right it doesn't quite appeal the other thing to know about this is that it is horrendously fiddly to put down you are constantly fighting between having it pop through the ground and having things like leaf piles and branches stick through the side or alternatively having it float like this ultimately I elected to have it float and try and connect it to this door on the back of my house as best that I could. I've also got my workshop over here just the standard arrangement that most people seem to have of just a stash box and the more critical workbenches. In the side of the building over here is where I have my chemistry workstation and my still because I have said before that I think that these things would put off some noxious fumes that you wouldn't necessarily want in your main house. You'd want it in a well ventilated area so I've just got them in this little lean-to out here but it does have a nice view of the pond when you're working at the still here. The other area that we have on the first floor is what's becoming pretty much standard for me in the form of a power room with some different switches to control some different things. I've got my decontamination arch set up here so that it just goes off when I come through the door and turns off automatically. It is such a power hog. I don't like to leave it running all the time. I've also got a manual override so if I'm going to be running in and out a lot. I don't have to always enter the combination of the door. Got some switches set up here. I've got a master that turns everything on and off with the exception of that light and that door and decon arch set up that way I don't accidentally lock myself out. And oh I'm gonna have to take a drink here. Sorry. There we go. Um, I can turn my resource collector off if I want. I don't really know why I would, but I put it on a switch anyway just because that's the kind of person that I am. <laughs> that's the things that I like to do with my builds. And same thing with the water purifier. This switch turns the water purifier on and off. Most importantly, I can turn the vendors off so that I don't have random people coming through my camp when I'm trying to <laughs> record a video. And I've also got a switch here that turns all the lights off around the entire place. I would dearly love to have a clock switch like we had available in the electronics mod in Fallout 4 so that I could have these lights turn on automatically at night and turn off automatically in the day. Nevertheless, that is a limitation that we do have with this particular game, so we just deal with it as best we can. I did like these kind of uh, pod-style rooms above the, uh, the main living area, so let's go upstairs and take a look at how these turned out. Decoration up here is even more sparse because of my budget problems, but it is a nacho business settlement, and so, of course, there does have to be a bathroom. And, as usual, I have a reminder for my code for my door <laughs> in the crapper, where people are maybe not so likely to find it. Last thing that we've got going on up here is my bedroom, where I can get my well-rested perk and my well-tuned perk and if I want I like to imagine that my character could come out here in the morning and have a nice cup of coffee think about what he's gonna do before he uh, heads out for the day so yeah that is my mansion camp 
if we want to call it that. I am interested to hear what you guys have to think, so leave me a comment. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you did not like, please let me know why so that I can try and do better for you next time. And if you are not subscribed, consider subscribing. Until next time, my name is Nacho Business, and I'm saying it is a great big wasteland out there. Let's go have fun in it.